What is intelligence? Well, for a long time, a key marker for an intelligent creature has been tool use. After all, humans use tools to achieve things they otherwise wouldn't have been capable of and we think we're pretty smart. And if you've seen any of my previous videos documenting the wild sulfur crested cockatoos that visit my balcony, then you'll know. They're smart, like really smart. But are they tool smart? Here on the channel, I've already demonstrated that these birds are quick learning and keen problem solvers, solving puzzle after puzzle in their relentless quest for delicious seeds. But what if I gave them a puzzle that they couldn't just solve by prodding and poking? What if they had to use tools to get to their reward? What would happen? Well, I went on a quest to find out. And as usual, the results were not what I expected. Every day I'm visited by my feathery friends and it's been a regular occurrence for over two years now. Popeye, the star of the show and my favorite, finds himself at home on our balcony and has become a lot more comfortable with me since we first met. Instead of flying away when I approach, he will now cautiously accept seed offerings from a bowl and is even once or twice eaten out of my hand. But because of his bad eye, he'll occasionally confuse my hand with seed and as you will find out later in this video, you really do not want to be bitten by these birds even if it's by accident. The second favorite is Edwina, who thoroughly enjoyed her custom-made gift from last year, and she is the polar opposite of Popeye's personality. While Popeye is gentle and cautious, Edwina is tenacious and pretty much fearless at this point. Her favorite trick is to fly onto the door to announce her presence with a loud thud, and I just love her little yellow fluffy tufts. Lately, she's been accompanied by this big chunky boy, who I believe is Prince from my previous videos. And if you're wondering just how I can tell the genders apart, it's easy. Female sulfur crested cockatoos have a deep red eye, while males have black eyes. You do need to be pretty close to see them though. I need to mention that some birds have already been documented using tools in the wild. Palm cockatoos use sticks and tree hollows to drum, for potential mates, it's adorable, and wild goffins cockatoos have only just last year been observed to make a little meal kit to eat sea mangoes, which um, look like this, by the way. Yeah, I'd never heard of them either. Now onto the puzzle design. It features at its center a feeding bowl where seeds can be placed, but alas, there is this clear dome in the way made from a planter pot I found at Bunnings and I drilled large holes in. The hypothesis is that by leaving sticks and twigs around the puzzles, the birds may try to use them as a tool to push seeds off the platform into the trays surrounding the puzzle. That's the thought process anyway. So I secured it to the balcony where Popeye and Prince were waiting, and this is what happened. Yeah, after less than a minute, I had to intervene and stop this insane bird from destroying the plastic any further and potentially hurting itself. I knew their beaks were strong, but I didn't expect that much destruction in such a short amount of time. It's really interesting though, seeing Prince angle his head in all sorts of orientations, looking for weaknesses that he can exploit, all in the never ending quest for food. And in just that single test, the clear dome was trashed and it's pretty obvious that this puzzle design is completely flawed. So let's redesign it. And hey, if design and 3D printing sounds interesting to you, then why not consider subscribing? Here on Maker's Muse, it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology, and you can find 3D printing tips, tricks, 3D printer reviews, and tutorials to make stuff like I've shown in this video. I think you'll find a lot of value in hitting that button. So for the new design, instead of this huge domed shape, I went with a tall, thin box, which houses a seed platform that can pivot back and forth, only accessible by a small window above it. To avoid the same destruction as before, I decided to construct this window out of polycarbonate, the same plastic used to make combat robot arenas. It's incredibly tough, and I have no doubt that it'll withstand everything the birds throw at it. As a final touch, I added this threaded rod bar to the top, just in case they decide to try to circumvent it that way, 
and the version 2 is complete. In the design, the opening is too small for the cockatoos to get in and take the seeds directly, so they'll have to find other inventive methods of getting them, such as using sticks to poke the platform, or maybe even dropping in things from the top. I have no idea, but Edwina and Prince were the first to have a go. Look at their silly, dirty faces. Someone's been digging in the mud. Naturally, the first thing Edwina does is take the chopstick I provided as a potential tool and yeets it off the balcony. Unfortunately, this seems to be pretty standard behavior for these birds. Anything that's not bolted down, they seem to find great joy in just throwing out of the way. But with that gone, they both began to scope out the puzzle, looking for any possible weak spot to exploit. I found what Prince was doing really interesting, using the lower half of his beak, called the lower mandible, to apply huge amounts of force to that bolt in an effort to break in. He's actually lifting the entire puzzle up slightly, and look at that tongue, he's like, they're so close, I can taste it. After letting them fool around for a bit, I try to reintroduce them to the concept of stick equals food, but yeah, they just were not having it. But what if a more calm, cool, and collected cockatoo had a go? Enter Popeye. By now, he knows that anything I put out in the balcony is potentially food, so he goes right up to it and, yep, you guessed it, instantly throws the stick away. Oh, and then he has to stand on it for some reason. I don't know. It's his thing. With no obvious interest in using the chopstick as a tool, I figured there's no way he'd get the seeds, so I just left him to play with the puzzle while I went and did other things. And for a while, he was genuinely stumped, walking away and then back and then away again. But then this happened. He somewhat accidentally booped the platform off axis with the tip of his beak just fast enough to rocket a little, freeing a few seeds. And you can see this instantly shifts his focus to this area of the puzzle. And after a few more tries, he gets it to happen again. So imagine my surprise coming back to see he'd somehow gotten seeds out of the puzzle when I specifically designed it to require tool use. So to recreate the experiment, I put the puzzle out again the next day with some fresh seeds, and this time I sat back to observe what he did. And it doesn't happen straight away, but yeah, he's clearly figured out how to get seeds from my puzzle in a way I never expected. And after a few more attempts, he perfected his technique to the point where he was getting seeds every time. And it was at this stage that I realized that the entire premise of this experiment was totally wrong. I had seen videos of trained birds seemingly using tools to solve puzzles or do incredible feats like opening locks or riding along on little skateboards. But I think it's really important to differentiate between behaviors adopted from natural problem solving skills to behaviors induced through positive reinforcement training in captivity. I remember being at the Taronga Zoo free flight bird show, which is incredible by the way, and asking one of the trainers how they got the birds to fly from one end of the stadium to the other, free flight, no cages or anything. And they said it was just a simple task of starting small and gradually increasing the distance with a reward at each successful attempt. And it's the same when you want to teach an animal a trick. Create an environment where they may do what you want just randomly, reward them when they do it, and then reinforce that behavior and build on it over time with associated cues and rewards. And then hey presto, you have an animal that will perform tricks. And it's why I think Edwina flies onto the door in the exact same spot every time, and why Bobby dances for attention. It's because these actions in the past have resulted in seeds, so they just keep doing it. But what of the Goffin's cockatoo study? While I have no doubt that cockatoos have the intelligence to create tools, there's a serious issue of what's called captivity bias, where animals behave differently in a captive controlled setting compared to when observed without interference in the wild. According to that study, they literally state that after two projects and almost 37 days of observation of wild birds, they saw no sign of tool use. So they decided to just capture the birds in a temporary aviary so they could act as naturally as possible. And only then did they start making tools. I don't know, maybe they're already just making shivs for their newfound bird prison. And yes, I admit that I'm also changing my bird's behaviors by interacting with them, but that's not the biggest flaw in my approach. Why on earth would a cockatoo try to use a flimsy wooden stick as a tool when they have the best tool evolution can provide attached to their face, their beaks. 
Although they may not look it, beneath their fluffy, feathery exterior lies the body of a strange alien creature. And in this skeletal diagram, you can see just how incredible their beaks really are, which as you can see, acts like a pair of bolt cutters. The shape of the lower mandible is this hollow U shape with sharp edges, concentrating all of that force onto one tiny area. And it's this feat of evolution that allows the cockatoo to crack open the shells of incredibly hard nuts and seeds with ease, grace, and most importantly, control. They are able to apply this force in such a controlled manner that I have observed them manipulate and eat several seeds at once using their tongue to rearrange them as necessary. Okay, fine. If they want to play it that way, they can. I know how to build the perfect cockatoo puzzle. I've known that cockatoos can be destructive for some time. You just need to look at the state of our balcony and fly screen for that. But I had no idea just how quickly they could annihilate wood if there's food on the line. While Popeye took a more leisurely approach, Prince was so fast to destroy the puzzle that by the time I hit record on the camera, he was already halfway through. You can see that he has this perfect technique of finding a weakness in the wood and then using the wood's grain as like a guide to lift entire chunks free and honestly, even without a food reward, cockatoos just love tearing wood apart. Popeye actually went back to the puzzle, even after it was cleared out of seats, just so he could chew on it a little bit more. I think they genuinely enjoy it. But it's also because in the wild, they nest in hollows of dead trees. And the only way of them tidying up these nest hollows is by using the tools they were born with. By the way, sulfur crested cockatoos are just one of many species of animals who rely on natural tree hollows for nesting, and the destruction of these results in the displacement and decline for a huge number of species. If you want to do your part in reversing this damage, you can build a nest box to attach to living trees for them to use, and Wise has a great article on the importance of nest boxes. Plus, they're my charity of choice for this video. They're a non-profit organization who do great work rescuing and rehabilitating sick and injured Australian wildlife, and you can find links in the video description. Catch you later, guys. Bye.